Thank you for joining our JCU webinar series. My name is Cameron Murphy, and I'm one of the future student advisors here at JCU. And tonight I'll be your MC. I acknowledge the Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the first inhabitants of this country and pay my respect to the traditional owners and elders, past and present, of the land on which we stand today. In the spirit of reconciliation, I also acknowledge the valuable contributions that Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples continue to make to James Cook University and the broader community. Before we get started, I'd just like to do some housekeeping. Uh, if you do have any questions during this presentation, uh, please type them into the Q&A box in your Zoom control panel, and I will address those with our student ambassadors as they arise. Tonight, we have three of our JSU student ambassadors who will be sharing their top tips for first years, how they transitioned from school to uni, how to balance life and study, and all about life as a JSU student and living on campus. Tonight, we have Rachel in her second year of education, studying a bachelor, pardon me, Rachel in her second year of edu secondary education, studying in Townsville. Cameron, a second year business student based in Cairns, and Kevin, who is studying his the Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, and it is in his third year based in Townsville. Now, I'd like to pass it over to our ambassadors who will each tell a little bit about their journey. Hi guys, um, so my name is Rachel Ward and I am, like it was mentioned, I'm second year studying a um, Bachelor of Secondary Education. At the moment, my major is history and my minor is English, just because those are my favorite subjects in school. So I grew up a little bit outside of Mackay on a cane farm and it was very isolated. Um, didn't really, like there was just one school, didn't really get to go out very much. There was only one uni in Mackay. Um, so I wanted to look for something a little bit different. So um, when I was in grade 12, I took a trip up to JSU and we got to look through the campus, do some activities. They talked us through like what we might go through in our degree. And I just instantly fell in love. It was something a little bit different. Moving away from home was a little bit scary. And the possibility of having to pay for it myself was a little bit scary. Uh, but I knew it was just going to be an awesome experience. So in grade 12, I was tossing out what I actually wanted to study. It was between kind of nursing and teaching. But then I had a really awesome teacher who really inspired me. Like she helped me a lot through the stresses of grade 12. And I knew that that's what I wanted to do. Um, help students get through like specifically senior students. Um, just learn, develop passion for the subjects that I want to teach. And just help them through the tough times in their life. Um, so I came up here and um, I didn't know anyone up here when I moved. And now I've made some of the best friends, made the best memories of my life. And I'm just having so much fun. And definitely loving my course so far. Um, it's just awesome. The experiences we get from JSU specifically in terms of placement is just unmatched. Perfect. Thanks, Rachel. All righty, guys. My name is also Cameron. Um, I am a third year Bachelor of Business student majoring in Human Resource Management. Um, so I was born and bred in um, Cairns. I went to St. Andrews for primary school and St. Augustus for high school. Um, I'm in my last year of a third year degree uh, at JCU uh, based internally in Cairns. Um, I started off in the first year with a marketing and management major, um, got through there uh, for a little bit and then decided that wasn't for me, um, got a little bit of a taste of HR and ended up switching over at the beginning of second year and loved it since. And yeah, I'm nearly finished and have secured full-time work, which is one of the benefits of JSU, very well connected, all your lecturers know someone. And yeah, that's my student ambassador story. Hey guys, I'm Kevin. So as mentioned before, I study a Bachelor of Medicine and a Bachelor of Surgery. I'm currently in my third year here in Townsville and I'm actually moving to Cairns next year to finish it off. Um, so a bit about me, I went to Holy Spirit for primary school and went to Ryan Castle College here in Townsville. Um, so basically been a Townsville local for 12 years. Um, also, um, interesting fact about me is that I started off in nursing first before I went into med. So um, I just 
podcast, I decided to make the switch and loved it ever since. So, so far I've been to um, Charters Towers Lawn in Victoria um, and I'm going to Manizer next year for my placement. So it's been a fun time and I can't wait to go to more places, I guess. Perfect. Thanks, Rachel, Cameron and Kevin. So that's a bit, I guess, a bit of a taster of who we're going to hear from tonight uh, and the questions that we've tailored to them uh, will, I guess, be able to provide a little bit of their experience um, from high school through to university and everything, I guess, in between. So we have got two topics that we would like to discuss tonight. Uh, and within those two topics, we've got a number of questions that the student ambassadors will answer uh, as they go through. Uh, so our first question is um, going to be answered by Cameron. And the question is, how have you found the transition from attending school to going to university? Thanks, Cam. Um, so one of the big differences for me was coming into university life. There's like, uh, or you'll hear your parents and your teachers say it over and over. There's no one really telling you that you have to have this done by this date, or you have to be here or do this at certain times. And it can be really, really difficult to stay on top of everything. So you've got like work, study, relationships, you know, sporting, social, family, all these different events in your life that you have to attend and you have to be on top of. Um, but it can get really, really tricky. So the biggest thing for me was um, using my calendar, setting to-do lists and reminders. These three things were probably what I owe all my success to in um, university as thus far. Um, it was a, it was a big deal for me. And I think also using these tools, there's a lot of different ways to set them up. So for me, I love using just my calendar on my um, laptop because it links up with my phone and they all talk to each other. Um, and then obviously like I have my subjects, color coordinated, social life, um, a separate color and things like that too. And it's really nice just starting your day off, you sit down, you check your emails, you have your calendar open there and you just have a have a good look at what you've got coming up for the day and for the week. And it just helps you stay on top of all your assignments, exams, study and things like that. Um, so that would probably be my biggest um, transition is just um, staying on top of all your commitments. And I guess carrying on from that, Cameron, um, thinking back to when I went to uni, the way I studied and the way you probably study are very different. Is there sort of a transition time, I guess, that you found to sort of work out a groove for you as to how you best study and, and prioritise your time and those sorts of things? Yeah, for sure. I, I hope by, you know, by grade 12, you've kind of got a rough idea of how you study and what's, what's best for you. But even then, uh, the workload and the, the type of content at university is a whole step up. So you do have to kind of figure out what's best for you and to really work on that, that different study method for you. Um, so that was another thing that, you know, you had to figure out whether you liked writing notes, whether you like typing them, you know, summarizing, watching your lectures in person, watching them online, um, just works for everyone and definitely can take a good year or two to kind of find out what's best for you. And you'll find a lot of time in that first year when you're getting used to that kind of university experience, your marks can be quite average, but until you really get the hang of it, that's when you'll start to really improve. Perfect. Um, well, I guess maybe this could potentially lead into a question that you'll answer later, but how do you find your best study? Um, for me, it's always, I've been an in-person learner. So I'm an extrovert. I like talking to people. I love the human connection, hence human resource management. Um, and for me, it was always coming to my lectures, coming to my tutorials, because it kind of had a bit of a twofold, a uh, bit of a double-edged sword there. I got to know my lecturers, which paid off a lot um, in down the future. But, you know, if, if, um, you've got personal things that come up in life and you do need to approach that lecturer for an extension or there's just those extra circumstances that makes it a lot easier when the lecturer has seen you putting in the work every single week. Um, so yeah, for me, it was always just coming to lectures, coming to tutorials and um, having that face-to-face -face meeting. Perfect, wonderful, thank you. Good tips for anyone in year 12 looking at transitioning next year or will be transitioning next year, thank you. Uh, our next question uh, for tonight uh, will be answered by Kevin. Um, staying within the student life aspect is what sort of clubs and societies are available on our Cairns and Townsville campuses? Uh, yeah, so basically what, whatever interest you may have, there's probably a club at JSU already there. And if not, you can probably start one yourself. 
Um, so we have things ranging from ultimate frisbee anime to um, even like political clubs here at JCU. So the one club that I'm like involved in this year is um, JCU MSA. So that's the James Cook University Medical Student Association. So each of the courses will have their like course based club, and mainly these sort of clubs are there for your student advocacy. So like they help you communicate with your teachers and um, but they're also there for industry connections as well. So um, a lot of the time they have guest doctors in various specialties come in, give talks um, and like host workshops. So it's just a good way to make connections within your own career, I guess. And also like they they organize the social club um, events within the, within the degree. So Medball, that's pretty big for us, med people, um, social mixers and stuff like that. And we also have like our interdisciplinary clubs, so rhinos, so that's where you can branch out more, meet people from other degrees, um, health, sorry, other health degrees. And again, a lot of it is done through the social mixers and like workshops and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, we also have like our cultural and religious clubs as well. So, um, so we have the JC Christian Society, JC Muslim Student Association. Um, it's really good for people that are living away from home from home, I guess, and just want to keep in touch with people in their own culture, have someone to relate to, and is, again, there for like a support network, I guess. Um, and yeah, so there's definitely lots of clubs out there um, and you just have to go searching for it. And a good way to look, search for the clubs at JCU is through the JCUSA um, website. And like, it just gives you information about what clubs there are out there. Perfect. Thank you. I guess they are certainly a great way to connect with students, both within the same discipline as you, but also those with similar like-minded interests as well. Um, this isn't a question about student life, um, but it relates to you, Kevin, and I'm just going to, I guess, hijack the presentation things. I guess I can. Uh, but a question did come through for you. And before I forget to answer it, I'd just like to ask it now. Uh, so a student has come through asking if you finished your nursing degree uh, and then moved into medicine or did you transfer um, halfway through? And I guess uh, a supplement question to that is if you did transfer halfway through, was that always the intention or is that something that you just discovered halfway through or at that point of transfer? Um, so I didn't finish my nursing degree. Um, I just did the year of nursing a Bachelor of Nursing Science and the Bachelor of Midwifery. Um, so I did apply to med the like the initial straight out of high school. Unfortunately, I didn't get in, but I thought nursing was the next best thing for me. I wanted to be in the hospital, work with patients. So I went into nursing and um, I guess like my marks were like relatively good for me to apply again. So I tried again and um, yeah, luckily got in. Um, but in saying that, I do know people that did finish their nursing degree and go into med. Um, I know people that worked as a nurse for 10 years and go into med. So like, honestly, you can come from any walk of life and get into medicine, I guess. Perfect, thank you. And then thanks to the person that just asked this question, I guess it all brings it all back together. Um, again, studying medicine, do you have much time to socialize uh, within, I guess, the clubs available on campus? And I, before you do answer this, Kevin, I guess um, maybe when you answer it, you'll probably apply it to all degrees, um, not necessarily just medicine, if you can. Um, yeah, uh, I guess I, I guess like for the first half of the semester, where it's like less exam focused, like um, less assessment heavy, I, I do have a lot of time to branch out. So me personally, um, been involved in JCU, MSA, did ultimate frisbee, been part of the um, JCU Greens Club. So I, I, you do have the time. It's just, it's up to you on how you organize your time and um, like how you swerve around all your other commitments as well. So I guess tying, um, I guess your response, thank you. And Cameron's sort of, ma that management of time is really important, sort of dedicating sufficient time uh, to your studies and then I guess also de uh, dedicating sufficient time to the social aspects of university are probably equally as important, would you say? 
Yes, yes, it's very important. Um, when you get to university, you learn how to use that calendar really well. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks for that. Uh, that's really good information. Um, moving on to our next question. Uh, this one's going to be answered by Rachel. And fortunately for us, Rachel has lived on campus. So this will give, I guess, an insight view as to what it's like to live on campus. Over to you, Rachel. Uh, so I live at the John Flynn College in Townsville, which is one of the private colleges that you can choose to live at. There's um, about five or so that you can choose um, from in Townsville. So there's the two private ones, which are the John Flynn uh, and the Saints Catholic Colleges. These are both um, just private away from the uni, um, but then there's other ones like that are under the company Uni Lodge, um, and these also link up to the ones in Cairns. So if you're living on campus for your first three years in MedSay and then wanted to move up, um, that's also an option. It's helpful that they're linked between the two campuses. Um, but I have lived on John Flynn for two years now, and it's just it's such a great experience. Like I, when I first moved away from home, I really struggled. I'm definitely a homebody. I didn't know anyone up here. I didn't have any friends. And I, since I started last year, um, I was on campus for about five weeks or so before COVID hit. So then when I came back in second sem, everything was online. I did not know a single person in my degree. And the only friends that I had up here was the people that I live with. So um, when living on campus, especially at John Flynn, you live with um, 11 other people. So there's a deck, which is what they're called. It's just like what floor you're on. Um, and there's 12 people and like you just share two toilets and three showers. It might sound a bit hectic, but it never really clashes. And my favorite thing about living on campus is definitely the social events. So as Kevin was mentioning before, um, there's always like time to have a social life, I guess. And the college definitely fills, <laughs> fills my time. There's always um, things like semi and like a formal type thing at the end of the year, like a ball. Um, but then if not, there's always like a new sporting event um, that the colleges compete between each other. And then just um, if we have a, like if we win a sports game, they'll put um, like celebrations down the court, give, give free food out and stuff like that. Um, so it's just a really good social vibe, I guess. Um, the John Flynn and um, most of the colleges will be catered as well. So that's three meals a day and, uh, a lot of a lot of the time it's just um, like a bain marie type thing you just take what you want um i i quite enjoy the food like even though it is mass produced they still do a really good job a lot all the colleges will have a qualified chef to come in and cook the food um, and they cater to any need that you want like whether you're celiac vegan anything they will cater to you which i thought was really awesome as well um And um, I also really like just living on campus. I found that um, I didn't have to make time to cook my own food. And then I also didn't have to make time driving class and stuff like that. I can literally just walk over five minutes before class starts. Um, it's just super convenient. Um, yeah, it's definitely like a little family and made living away from home 10 times easier. Perfect, good to know. Uh, so. Thank you for that information. Just taking a quick uh, look at the questions. Uh, now, I know you made it really compelling and I feel like everyone wants to live on campus. And uh, for those that obviously can see the slide, the top right pictures are our campus accommodation here in Cairns, which is where I'm located. And I'm pretty sure I could quite happily move in there, um, except for the fact that I can see my office from 90% of the rooms. So maybe I don't wanna live there. Uh, but thinking of yourself um, and I guess thinking to the audience that we've got in front of us there's been a question uh, would you recommend living on campus for the first year um, or maybe just even for the first semester yeah I would definitely recommend it um, especially because um, at a lot of the colleges and living on campus you'll find that a lot of other students are studying the same degree as you so it's not you'll make friends going to classes and stuff like that but you also make study buddies when you live with the people um, and no matter where you turn there's always someone you can ask I guess and it's really a lot easier to reach out um, especially being in your first year there are a lot of commitments that you like a lot more study commitments compared to grade 12 and compared to high school and it takes up a lot more time so they say um, a standard subject should um, you should study for 12 hours per subject I guess so it's like a full-time job uh, so it does take a lot of time um, when you live on campus it takes a lot of time 
um, out of your day that you can then put towards study. So um, all your meals are cooked. They'll come and do a room clean for you once a week. So um, sweep and mop your room and stuff like that. And just, it makes it so much easier. And a lot of times, um, like it's, yeah, it's just a lot easier. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I was mute. Who doesn't want three meals cooked for you every day? Uh, there's also been another question come through and um, I'm going to answer it, but absolutely, Rachel, if you can add any additional information to, to assist the students when it comes to this topic. Uh, so there's been a question coming through about how do you apply to live on campus? Uh, so thanks to Fiona who put this presentation together. There is a cheeky little link on the page or jc.edu.au forward slash, slash accommodation. Uh, from there, you will be able to see all accommodation options available on both campuses, uh, depending on which campus you wish to, uh, I guess, wish to study at and live on. Uh, from there, you'll be able to apply directly to the individual application, uh, to the individual accommodation providers. Um, and then there have been a few other additional questions coming through about the styles of living um, that maybe you live in, Rachel, um, and or the styles of accommodation available. Each of the accommodation providers do provide uh, if you aren't in Townsville or you don't necessarily have the time to get onto the campus, you can actually do virtual walkthroughs of the building. So I would, um, even if you do live on camp, live in Townsville or Cairns, um, I, I guess I'd strongly recommend that, just having a look as to potentially what the living environment might look like for you, um, because each accommodation has different prices and those sorts of things. Uh, would you agree with me or would you like to add anything additional, Rachel? Yeah, I'm just having a look at some of the questions now. Um, so, with um, the expenses of living on campus, um, it is quite expensive, but you have to keep in mind you are getting three meals a day, electricity, internet, um, everything's provided for you. So um, it can be quite expensive, but it does, um, all, it's just one upfront fee, or you can pay like in semesters or fortnights, um, whatever suits how you're paying. Um, so just keep that in mind, like it might be a little bit expensive when you see the overall fee, but it'd be the same um, roughly if you were say to rent a house. Um, so that was one of the questions, sorry. Um, and then, um, yeah, each college has a different style to, um, or a different room that can uh, suit your style. So although I'm living in a standard room at the moment and that is sharing um, a bathroom with a lot more people, there are options at every single college that you can um, only share with one or two other people and, or have a private ensuite. Um, even the um, new accommodation in, Townsville that they're building at the moment. Um, they have the ensuite rooms and the standard rooms again. Um, and they're just, that's going to be like any other college as well. So there's going to be heaps of social events and it's really easy to socialize when you all live in the one place anyway. Good intel, thank you. Um, and I guess taking from that, it is also important to consider um, those costs associated with accommodation uh, and I guess those costs can sometimes be the same as living off campus so it's it's something that I guess you need to work in with yourself uh, so perfect wonderful um, I'll, I will continue to monitor the, the Q&A so if you do get any questions absolutely put them in that that chat box and we'll monitor them as we go through I muted myself again, apologies. Uh, we will move on to our next question. Uh, so this question will be answered by all three of them. And I guess to make my job easier, I might just uh, go in the same order as, as I introduced you. So we'll go Rachel, then Cameron, and then Kevin. Uh, so thinking of the audience that we've got in front of us, uh, I guess, what are some of your top tips if you haven't already mentioned them or if you've got additional ones uh, who, that you might want to sort of pass on to those that are approaching the end of year 12 uh, and are preparing to transition into high school. Yep, so I'll start. Um, even though I've raved about living on campus, if that's not for you and or not an option for you and you want to just live in a house, whatever your living situation might be, my biggest advice, like we've already kind of talked about, is join societies. I just highly recommend joining any opportunity, any society, um, all the opportunities that you can get. It's quite overwhelming um, when you first come to uni, you don't know anyone, you don't know your way around campus. Um, joining societies is just such a great way to do it. Um, and specifically, join societies that might not necess necessarily be for your degree. It is awesome to have friends in the same degree as you. You can talk about assessments and stuff like that, but it's also really interesting and a really good idea to make friends outside of your degree as well, so that you're not 
always thinking about. That's not what your conversation is always about. You're making actual friends um, and you're not just thinking about uni all the time. So that's definitely one of my um, biggest tips. And um, even like join um, one of the clubs that, or one of the activities that weren't mentioned before was um, social sport. So it's just something that happens every Monday. Both campuses do it. They offer different sports like basketball, um, netball, uh, touch football and then they offer like this thing called rounders where you just play a different sport every week so um, in the photo um, on the left that was my team for first semester although I joined like a John Flynn team and those are the people that I live with um, this year you don't have to join a team it doesn't have to be college literally anyone in the uni can play and if you don't have a team you can just submit as an individual and they'll put you on team which is also an amazing way to meet people and kind of stay active and you really you don't have to be great at sport I'm terrible um, but I still have so much fun um, so yeah and that's also a great way to meet people outside of your degree I guess and just before we do move on to Cameron I guess that's something that probably really resonated with me uh, through my university degree I'm absolutely uncoordinated when it comes to sports but I think just getting out there uh, whether it be sport or another club um, or just even uh, connecting with friends it's sort of a great way to sort of remove the stress of university and those sorts of things yeah definitely and there's also um like into faculty so um if you do join your society or just want to play for your society so at the moment um into faculty netball is and um rugby league is running at the moment so that's just like where education will play business and law um and you just kind of do like a rounders type thing as well um which is also an like awesome way to meet people within your degree um and also people outside your of your degree when you burst them and just a fun way to stay active. Very good, thank you. Over to you, Cameron. All right, hey guys. Um, so my top two tips would be, um, the first one I kind of touched on a little bit before, but it'd just be getting to know your lecturers slash tutors. So like we always say, one of the best um, advantages of Cairns being like in a bit more of a regional area is sometimes, you know, um, depending on your the degree you're doing, the class size can be, or the lecture uh, size can be a bit smaller. So it's um, a lot better to be able to interact with your lecturer for you to get to know them and them to get to know you. Um, one of my HR lecturers actually put me in contact with my current employer. Um, and it's also really good to have your lecturers as um, referees and references on your resumes because they can attest to like your ability to show up, work hard, um, interact, put your hand up during uh, lectures and shoots and contribute um so that's a really big one and then my second one would be learning how to budget so um a lot of people kind of don't realize like all the costs and that you know being at uni it's you treat it like a full-time job like you're there um you know studying 40 hours a week um and you don't have a lot of time to work so the spare time that you do have to work you have to make that money last um, so yeah, just learning how to budget and stick to your budget, I think is a really, really good option, especially to if you are going to um, stay at home and live with your parents for those, the duration of your degree. Um, it's kind of useless, you know, still living with your parents if you're not actually going to actively try and save to, you know, um, have a bit of savings once you get out. So um, learning how to budget and sticking to it would be my second tip. Perfect, thank you. And then your top tips, Kevin? Um, my top tip is to find your outlet. So uni can get stressful at times, um, especially when assignments are piling up, exams are coming. Um, so it can all get a bit stressful, um, but find that thing that lets you blow off steam. So whether that's exercising, go to the gym, or just go to the beach or whatever, find what works for you and um, use it um, so for me personally, it's going for, for a long run. It just clears my head um, and gets me back into, into the zone. Um, yeah, to, just go back and study. And from that, um, and also just have that support network with you. So have your friends, use your family. Yeah, uni can be stressful at times, but it is fun as well. So just, it's all about a healthy balance, I guess. Perfect. And I guess um, as you go through the first year, you'll sort of work out what 
what your limit is as to how much study you can take on at any given time. And, and then I guess those who are in your immediate surrounding us who you can sort of go to and, and seek out support is also really important. Um, and I was just, as you were saying, um, you like to go to the beach or go, to the run, go for a run. I was just thinking of the surroundings of both our Tans Townsville and Cairns campuses. We've, we're located in two spectacular locations with a beach very close to uh, both of our campuses and the rainforest relatively close as well. Um, so that's, yeah, we were really fortunate to have that as well. Uh, so I guess to the three of you, thank you for your tips. They're really good. Some of them, maybe I wish I'd learnt um, nearly 10 years ago when I commenced, um, but yeah, live and learn. Uh, so we will continue on. And I would just like to acknowledge the multitudes of questions in the chat uh, that have come through. They, a lot of them will get answered in the second half of those. So uh, I've marked a few that I'll answer live um, and our student ambassadors will answer those as we go through. So uh, moving on, we will move over to uh, our second topic and that is the costs and support that are associated with university. Uh, so Kevin, this question's for you. Uh, what sort of costs um, does university have that you can sort of, I guess, identify? Um, yeah, so there are multiple costs. So you have your, um, well, tuition fees, they are generally covered by um, HEX if you are an Australian citizen. So that's something you don't have to worry about too much. But um, you do have to be mindful of like some course specific stuff. So um, when you go out on placement, just like getting accommodation and like food for placement when you're out, when you're out of town to all cans um, and like ex excursion fees. Um, Textbooks as well, um, textbook and stationery. Um, having a good working laptop, I would say, is essential. Um, have, it will help you a lot out. And um, and textbooks, they can get a bit expensive sometimes. Like, um, but however, there is a Facebook um, marketplace for both Townsville and Cairns that sells second hand textbooks, and off, and most of the time they are they are much cheaper than they are. So generally you have a textbook or two for each subject. So um, it, it just saves you a lot of money, I guess. Um, and yeah, be mindful of transport as well. Um, yeah, if you're living close to uni, you can maybe walk or ride a bike. Um, I find getting around in a car is the best for me. So, you know, having your rego, your insurance, fuel, it does add up. Um, but again, budgeting is a real th is a thing that you come to learn as you get older um, and yeah um, also consider your accommodation situation so if you if you're not too into the college route um, you might be looking at renting um, yeah factor that in um, and yeah just like other stuff as well so um, gym or like any sporting activities that you want to do and um, having that bit of money I guess on the weekend to go out and socialize with your friends um, yeah so I guess there are a lot of things to be wary of but if you do budget you, you can make it happen budgeting seems to be the top tip for the night um there has just been a question come in um the approximate cost of textbooks uh and i'm probably going to take a bit of a guess here and say all all three kevin rachel and cameron will agree textbooks vary um, from subject to subject um even degree to degree uh some of them are three trees worth of paper and then some of them are just a, a loose pamphlet of size um, so they do vary in cost um, it is worth to consider shopping around as kevin did say um, because certainly sometimes students are offloading them as they move up the years um, or they um, don't necessarily need them so and sometimes that as i learned if you buy a secondhand textbook sometimes the person before you has written small notes in the book which can be um, absolutely beneficial. So it is worth to consider um, looking around for textbooks, um, but also that applies to, um, I guess, all expenses, expenses you'd have to consider them. Uh, and then as everyone has said, budget for them. So perfect. Uh, thank you. Moving on to our next question. Um, so we've talked about this, the costs and the costs associated with university. Uh, now, I guess some of the ways we can offset those costs. So does JCU have any scholarships available to help support students? Uh, Rachel, for you, please. I'm probably the perfect person to um, answer this question. I, in my first year, I got five separate scholarships. Um, so I know a fair bit about applying and stuff like that. So I'll just go through some of it now. 
Um, so there's heaps of different scholarships for different things. So you can get for academic, um, for sporting. You can there's different ones for the accommodation you want to live at. So I know John Flynn and um, in Townsville, and the George Robert Halls uh, also do a separate scholarship. And I um, know Saints do multiple. Um, so in terms of accommodation, there's scholarships that side, and then through the uni, there's also specific scholarships. So um, if you just literally type in JC scholarships, it'll take you right to the website. And then um, you can kind of fill out the criteria. So um, you'd say what campus you want to study at, whether you're going to be a first year or any year. And then um, you can also put in your specific degree to find specific scholarships. So one of the ones that I got in my first year was an education scholarship. Um, keep in mind that a lot of times it will be just money put into your account. So that's what all of my scholarships were. They just put money straight into my account. Um, but they, sometimes they also will ask you to do extra things. So for my education scholarship, I do 100 extra hours of placement a year, um, which really, it does sound like a lot more work, but in the end, it really only benefits me because I get more time in the classroom and I get to develop uh, my skills as a teacher a lot more while also being funded to do that. So um, that's definitely something to keep in mind. And some will also be bursaries. Um, so the John Flynn will do a bursary where they just take $1,000 off your accommodation, which is one that I also got. Um, and then others will be specific to textbooks um, and stuff like that. So um, if I did see a question about um, what you can spend it on, so I just answered that. Um, before, I would start having a look now, um, even though a lot of them will need your ATAR results. Um, when I was looking in grade 12, I, I went through OP. I didn't have my OP results until um, a couple of days before Christmas, but I still had written up um, all the applications for the ones that I did want to apply for just because I was still in the motivation of finishing grade 12. Like I still had effort. I was, hadn't been on holidays for a few months and then had to write an 800 word paragraph about myself. So um, definitely recommend getting um, onto the JC website and having a look at the scholarships they offer and see what's required. So a lot of them uh, will require your birth certificate, your parents' financial uh, records and stuff like that. Um, just so have that all ga um, gathered before you apply. So it's just no stress. You can have it in by the due date. You're not gonna run out of time and it's all sorted. Um, and definitely just, don't be afraid to apply. I found that the reason I got so many was just because no one else really applied for them, I guess. Um, and I was, um, I am paying for college myself, so that could have also contributed to it as well. But um, I just found that a lot of people, when I talk to people uh, about scholarships, no one else applied for them. Um, so definitely just give it a go. If you don't get it, you don't get it. Um, but there's really, if you do get it, then you get free money, I guess, type of thing. Um, so there's no harm in just giving it a go. Um, so, yeah. Perfect, thanks, Rachel. And I guess um, scholarships are really an amazing thing to assist with offsetting all sorts of costs associated with uni. Uh, as Kevin did say, there are quite a large amount of associated costs that some of the costs you don't think about. Um, so like you buy stationery at the beginning of the year and you don't necessarily think about it maybe until the beginning of next year. Um, however, sometimes things happen and, and you just have to race out and buy new pens and pads and those sorts of things. So scholarships are amazing. They can sort of help offset those sorts of questions. Now, there were a few questions coming through the chat uh, with regards to those scholarships. Um, so as Rachel did say, some of those scholarships can sort of come in the form of, a, a, I guess, a direct transfer to your bank. I used to tell school students that it came in hard cash, cold hard cash. However, it never has and it probably never will because cash is the thing of the past, uh, but it, I guess it gets in a lot of the time it comes in the form of a bank transfer to your nom nominated account and it doesn't necessarily have stipulations. We assume and we hope that you do use it towards the studies uh, that you're doing, uh, but also you are able to, or sorry, some of them do have those stipulated um, requirements. And, and I guess, Rachel, as you did say, having to do those additional extra 100 hours um, in the classroom, whilst it sounds a lot at the beginning, it'll fly by, I'm imagining, but also the additional benefit that you'll gain from that, I guess is next to none that you'll, or it's amazing. Is that correct, would you say? Yes, definitely. So I'm about to start um, at a new school tomorrow, it will be my first day um, doing my 100 hours. Um, and it's just so awesome. So I was at a public school for my last placement and then uh, this is a private school. So I get to experience both sides, 
Um, and I just think like, it's just so unmatched. Like all um, my friends in education, they're doing 400 less hours of placement than I am in a way, um, just because I do get all that additional um, expertise from my teachers and stuff like that. Um, and then I get to have like one-on-one -on -one conversations um, and yeah, just, it really only benefits me in the end. And just to quantify 100 hours, maybe for me as I'm trying madly to crunch the numbers, but how, how long is 100 hours? Uh, it works out to be roughly three weeks when you factor in that I'm not just there from nine till three. I'm like there from eight till four or whatever. So it's really in the long time, a long grand scheme. It's not that long a time. Definitely not. It just flies by. A lot of our placements are two, three week blocks anyway. Um, and I don't have any exams this semester. So I'm going and doing placement instead of um, doing exams. So I win either way. Very good. That's always good. Perfect. Thanks for that. Um, I probably will assume you will have reassured a lot of parents at home that there are financial supports available for students uh, transitioning from high school to university. So thank you. Uh, moving along now, um, and we've got another question here. Uh, now, I know this topic has been raised, I guess, briefly, uh, and I guess it complements quite closely with the costs and also the support uh, of university. But do students have time for a part time job, Cameron? Yeah, awesome question, Cam. Um, definitely. So I think, again, <laughs> they're all, all these topics kind of linking back into each other, but I think the combination of you know, needing to budget, needing to work and setting up your calendar correctly. Um, it's the same as, you know, you uh, school, you have um, school Monday, Friday, and then you have your Thursday nights, your Saturday, your Sunday to, um, to work. I think the most important thing is trying to find an employer that is flexible and willing to work with you. Um, so right from high school, about grade 10, I worked through retail right the way through till my, um, the end of my first year at uni. So like, um, I was at Platypus Shoes for a little while, then Universal Store, and although these good places were good, it was the, the shifts in the rostering were like quite um, strict and really hard to kind of play around with uni. Um, and then for my second and third year, I did a complete change and ended up working for a solar panel company. Um, it was all commission based and I basically just got paid for what I made. I got to choose my own hours as a family business. Um, and I just came in, did the hours I did and then left. Um, so I think that's really important. And then also too, towards the end of your degree, if you can try and get in a, um, a position where you're actually getting experience in the industry you're in and getting paid for it too. So I know a lot of people doing um, education will go work at um, like after school cares or OSH or things like that. Um, or, you know, uh, speech pathologist going and working in admin at a, um, at a um, hospital or something like that. So I think towards the end, if you can just try and get your foot in the door, it's, you know, a win-win because you're getting paid and then you're also starting to try and get into the industry that you want to be in. Very good, thanks, Cameron. And I guess um, you've raised a few really good points and I would just like to note that Rachel agrees with you in the sense of um, if you can work, uh, work in, Work wherever you can get work, I guess, is probably the take home message. But uh, as you progress through your degree, sort of start to think about the profession that you're going to work in and, and seeing if there are jobs available. Because uh, once, or oh, there's a few benefits, I guess you earn money, you can have a little bit more freedom. But then I guess you can also build those connections, whether they be the place that you transition from university to the workforce or whether um, it's just building connections and, and moving as a stepping stone, I guess is really important. So very good, thank you. Um, perfect. Um, I think we're going to, well, I, I know we're going to move on to a sort of an open Q&A session now. So uh, we do have a few questions in the Zoom chat that we will uh, filter through and, and I'll ask the respective ambassador or maybe multiple um, those questions um, however if you do if we do run out of time and you do have additional questions um, absolutely email us at hello at jcu.edu.au uh, post this webinar and one of myself one of my colleagues in the future student advisors uh, team will get back to you um, as soon as possible but if you do have any questions absolutely utilize the next uh, say 15 minutes to get those questions answered because whilst we can provide all that information sometimes getting it from 
uh, if we want to say an expert in the matter as, as a university student, it's a really good opportunity. And I would like to thank everyone that has uh, participated and also asked the questions because some of those questions have been really, really, really valuable and really well thought out. So that's really good. Um, so perfect. Well, we might get started. So I'll just go back to the top of the list and, and see what some of them might be. Um, before we do get onto that, there has just been come, a question come through um, and I'm going to pass it over to you, Cameron, and I guess it sort of maybe will carry on to the question you, uh, sorry, the topic you just, just discussed about doing work in uh, the place of study. What are the benefits, I guess, of networking and those sorts of things throughout your degree and the workplace? Um, yeah, so the, I just want to really quickly talk about networking. So especially in areas like Cairns and Townsville, it's so much based on um, who you know and not so much on what you know. So um, obviously JSU is pumping out a lot of different um, degrees each year and everyone has that same bit of paper. So it's really important to try and um, make some connections and make some networks. So there's a lot of different ways you can do that. So that's through different employers. Um, depending on what your industry is, sometimes you can just go to a business that you would like to work for and ask to do some um, like a free internship. A business is never going to turn that down. Um, you'll be covered under JSU's insurance and it's just an extra set of hands for, for free for them. Um, so definitely to start as soon as you can start networking. So that also looks like you know, being um, active on LinkedIn, making an account, following a lot of different businesses and industries you want to be a part of, um, and just starting to kind of um, build your network. So by the time you graduate, you kind of have a rough idea of where you can start applying for. Perfect, wonderful. Now I've got a few questions that I'm going to blend in together for you, Rachel. There have been a few questions um, about, I guess, moving away from home to university. So I'm going to sort of package them all up into one power question. Uh, so one was moving away from home hard, um, but also do you think moving away from a different state would be, uh, would be hard and would you recommend it? So moving away from home was um, pretty hard in my first semester just because co like COVID happened and everything. But even in the first five weeks before um, that all happened, I really struggled because I'd never been away from my family for that long, um, from my parents, from my younger siblings. Um, and I really just miss having them around me all the time. But I found that living on college, um, especially just having 11 other people around you constantly um, on your deck and then going down to dinner you're, you're just socializing constantly and there is just so much support specifically living on campus um, and even off campus um, the uni offers so much support um, like just if you're if you feel like you are struggling there's always someone to talk to um, and I like i after about the first semester, I got used to it. I still miss my family a little bit. Um, so I just make sure to call home every week um, just so I can talk to them. But I, it was quite difficult. And being so young, I was still 17 when I moved up here. Um, I still felt like a little bit of a kid. But it was definitely worth it for me. I got to experience something that I never would have got to experience at home. Um, and in terms of moving states, if the course um, that you want to do is up here, I definitely recommend it. There's, you're going to make friends. Um, and if you don't, then join the clubs and societies to make friends. Um, you just have to be proactive about it a lot of the time. Um, in uni, you're not just going to um, make friends as easily as you do in high school. Um, but definitely recommend moving um, from states if, that, if you're considering it, just because uh, there is so much support and the, if your course that you want to do is here, um, you might regret not um, doing it or just because you didn't want to move um, away from home. It's okay to stay at home as well, um, but definitely it is an awesome experience. It's something you can say that you did um, and there is also so much support. Perfect. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and I guess that's really good because... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mackay's about four hours from Townsville. So it doesn't necessarily seem like a long way, but it's not necessarily a place that you can just duck home after uni and cry in the bathroom because you've had a terrible day. It's sort of a, you've got to ring home and, and then jump in the car and drive four hours. So I guess it's sort of one of those things that you do have to think about as well. Um, yeah, interesting. Very good, good points you've raised. Thank you. Uh, so this question, um, I guess, 
might, I might sort of take maybe an answer from all three of you briefly. Uh, so the question is, as pretty as it sounds, do you dress casually or professionally uh, for your first few days at uni? Uh, maybe go with you, Rachel. And actually, I might just su supplement with that a question. Um, I think you all have done some form of placement or work integrated learning. I guess, do you wear you, what you wear to uni? Do you that what you wear to uh, your placements or do you sort of dress it up or dress it down? Um, so when I go to uni, um, especially in my first semester, I didn't really, I wasn't too stressed about what I was going to wear. I just kind of wear like tights and a oversized t-shirt. That's just my go-to um, in my first year and now. Um, but I definitely dress more professionally on placement just because I am, uh, when I am on placement, I am teaching. So I need to have that kind of respect and dress like a teacher and act like a teacher. Um, so a lot of times I will just uh, wear my JCU polo um, and a pair of black slacks um, but I also just wear like a nice teacher dress um, but I definitely don't dress professionally to go to class and never have. Anyone else? Um, for me it was always just about um, being like well groomed um, and clean so as long as I had showered and I was like shaved and had um, just t-shirt and shorts on that was normally good enough for me um, and then obviously placements a whole different ballpark I would normally do um, depending on where my placement was when I was in at the Shangri-La it was full button-up t-shirt um, trousers and boots um, but apart from that it was uh, uni was normally just pretty pretty relaxed also. Perfect and for you Kevin in medicine? Oh uh, yeah so same as Cameron so when I was at uni doing lectures um uh, t-shirt, shorts, pair of thongs. Yeah, you're all set. Um, be, be mindful though, like some of the practicals you have to do, you do have to wear clothes and shoes. Um, and then we also had a thing called clinical skills. So that's where we actually had to dress up as a doctor. So, you know, button up shirt or polo, um, slacks um, and leather shoes. Um, and that's what you do. And you wear the same stuff when you go out on placement. So I guess when you're in uni doing lectures, tutorials, yeah, you can be more casual, but when you do actually go outside of uni and doing placement, yeah, you, you dress up for the job that you are gonna do in that degree. Perfect, wonderful, thank you. Uh, so there's been a few questions about uh, public transport and vehicles. And um, I know it's been asked to, at a few people, but I'm gonna ask you, Rachel, since you live on campus um, and I'm, I'm going to answer for Kevin and Cameron both have mentioned or uh, maybe in this conversation or uh, outside this conversation have both mentioned they do have vehicles so they so we know living off campus having a vehicle is recommended or it's an option um, there is public transport to both of our campuses but Rachel for you someone who's someone that's living on campus would you recommend having a car or do you utilize public transport to not necessarily get onto the campus because it's just across the street uh, but to get around Townsville and those sorts of things. Uh, personally, I did bring my car up um, for both years just because I really like driving around and I also um, got a job this year. So it was um, I needed my own transport just with the unpredictability of my um, work roster sometimes like the bus doesn't always um, meet up when I need to get to work. But I know um, a lot of people that I live with this year chose not to bring their cars up just because you can literally just walk to campus. It's a five minute walk, not even like it's so close and convenient that you can get away with not having a car. And there is always someone around you specifically like living on campus that can drive you somewhere. So um, one of the girls that I live with this year, she didn't have a car. Um, whenever she needs to go to a doctor's appointment, there's 11 people on her deck that she can ask or 240 other people that she might know around campus that she can ask as well. Um, and she's managed to get a job um, around um, the hospital as well. And there's just, there are a lot of um, opportunities on an actual campus to get a job as well. So if you don't have a car, I'd recommend looking into that as well. Um, if not, the public transport is suitable. A lot of people still take the bus. Um, it gets you from A to B and it, it's reliable. Perfect. And I guess uh, this question is directed at Rachel and or Kevin, whoever may be able to answer. Uh, I guess the million dollar question is we do have uh, scooters on our cans, uh, sorry, on our Townsville campus. I wish they were in cans. Uh, do you use them? Um, I do, just because where medicine is located at JCU Townsville is quite 
distance away from the library, which is like further at the back. So if you want to get from point A to B in two minutes, the scooter is very convenient um, way to go about it. So I have used it. It's fun. And yeah, I guess spices up your day a little. I haven't used them just because I'm a little bit clumsy and will definitely fall off. Um, but I see they parked them at every college. Um, so when I'm driving to work or something, I'll see all the kids, or not kids, but um, all the students hop on one and zoom over to class. So they do get used and are pretty convenient. I'm not going to lie. I think if I had them in cans, I would use them, even if it was just to go to the coffee shop or the building next door, uh, because they look like a whole heap of fun. But a great way to uh, transit around the campus. So perfect. Um, thank you. Um, there's been a question here raised um, to you, Kevin. Uh, what does a day in a lot day look like as a medical student? Um, what are your how many lectures, uh, times and, and pracs and those sorts of things? Um, yeah, so have to admit the contact hours or like the amount of hours that you have to spend on uni it is a bit more than other degrees um so and it like varies from day to day so typically um beginning of the week i have all my lectures i watch that um and then so i will go to uni watch the lectures in person and then the following day i might have a few tutorials um like so that's coming from the lecture so that's where you sit down go through a workbook and like go through case discussions and stuff like that. And on top of that, you also have your clinical skills. So that's where you, um, you know, dress up in your doctor uniform, I guess, um, and practice clinical skills. So like that's your vital signs, you know, using the stethoscope to just doing assessment on people. And then towards the end of the week, you have another set of lectures, but they're called um, synthesizing sessions. So those are there to like, kind of summarize all the information that you learned for the week. Um, and the, yeah, just to consolidate the information. So roughly it works out to be around 25 hours a week you have to be on uni for. So um, yeah, it's just something to be very wary of when you are doing medicine. Perfect, thank you. And then I guess quickly, just quickly, um, Rachel and Cam, if you wanted to, I guess, put a day in a life of an education business student just so people can compare and I guess if those that are interested in educational business sort of get an idea. Yep so we're finally back on campus um, this semester so at the moment I have two days um, where I have on-campus classes and then um, I still do a couple online classes so I only have uni on Tuesdays, Wednesdays and Thursdays this semester and I have just finished my Thursday classes so now I only have uni on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Um, and I did see another question about um, the flexibility. So a lot of times in education and some other degrees, um, there might be three class times that you get to pick um, between. And if I think um, one is gonna fit in better with my uni schedule or my work schedule, I will pick that class. Um, yeah, so you do get to have a little bit of flexibility and um, education specifically, it's not too content heavy. I only do um, like one lecture, per subject a week and a lot of times they're not even an hour and they're just pre-recorded so I can watch it at my own time. So I'll just smash them all out on a Sunday night and then only have to attend the shoots and do the readings like that. So um, education, um, it, at least up until second year, um, is pretty chill. You do get a lot of free time, but um, you do have to use that doing assignments and readings. Um, for business, it kind of um, depends. In first year, you have uh, like in general mandatory subjects and those will be a lot um, heavier on attendance um, just because there's a lot more. But the further you go through your degree and, and start to specify into more niche areas, um, you can only have like, you only have really five to 10 um, other students in your class. So there's not really too much flexibility with the time. If they make the time, you have to stick to it. Um, for me at the moment, I've got one... Um, class on campus which is like a workshop so it's a big three hour um, stint on a Tuesday and then my two other classes external so one's on Monday night and one's on Thursday night and um, they're every couple of weeks so as you get towards the end depending on the subjects and things you choose the workload can definitely be different. Perfect. Thank you now I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you Kevin this question simply because you discussed it earlier and I'm gonna a little bit like Rachel, I'm going to combine a couple of questions together. So um, orientation week is arguably one of the most important weeks of the, maybe the academic life of a uni student, simply because it allows you to 
um, well, I'll get you to answer that question. What is orientation week like? And also, is that a great time to, I guess, join clubs and societies? Uh, yeah, so orientation day is basically, you come into uni, um, it's a good opportunity to see who else is in your degree. It's a good opportunity to also meet your lecturers and academic. And um, but the main part of orientation day is just to like get you used to around your surroundings. So like making, making sure you know where all the buildings are, where the classes are held, but also making, making sure you know what services are available at uni. So um, library, accessibility, um, student wellbeing, um, careers, so stuff like that. And then during orientation week, we do have a thing called market day. So that's when all the clubs put out a store out of the library lawns and they basically advertise what the club does and that um, and then that's your opportunity to sign up to the club and get involved. Um, so yeah, um, orientation day, it is a good opportunity to um, yeah, sign up to clubs and know what you are, what you want to do. Quickly, thank you. Uh, there's just, I, I guess, maybe time for one more question and I just like one really quick answer from all three of you. Um, now I've lost the question. Uh, does going doing a course at JCU make you feel prepared to go into the industry? I'll start, sorry. Um, I definitely feel so extremely prepared. So I'm only in my second year and for my second year placement, I got to teach for two weeks straight. So um, that's just such an awesome experience. I get to put all my behavior management and, and all the content that I'm learning in my classes straight into practice straight away. I don't have to wait until fourth year um, and kind of forget everything that I've learned. I get to develop it over time. And I genuinely feel like by the time I'm in fourth year, I'll be fully ready to step into a classroom and be a full-time teacher. Thank you, Cameron. I graduate at the end of this trimester, so in about five weeks, and I am could not be more excited and prepared to go. Um, I am currently working in the position that I will graduate um, into, and it has been smooth sailing. I haven't had any problems, and I've gotten to actually apply all that I've learned over the last three years. Perfect, thank you, Kevin. Um, yeah, definitely. So the good thing about JCU Medicine is that we have the most amount of placement hours compared to any other university. So that just means I'm more prepared in the clinical situation. I have more support and just have better skills when I graduate. And um, in sixth year, all you do is basically you're in the hospital Monday to Friday, basically working as an intern doctor. Perfect, wonderful, thank you. You'd think after 18 months I could work out where the unmute button is. Um, so thank you uh, to Kevin, Rachel and Cameron for being, I guess, fantastic student ambassadors for the university and providing um, a wealth of knowledge to the questions that have been asked of you. Uh, we have run out of time. However, for those still in attendance, if you do have any additional questions, uh, please email us at hello at jcu.edu.au and one of my team will get back to you uh, with a suitable response. Um, we do have uh, a range of webinars available that have been pre-run. Uh, so if you do want to check out this webinar or another webinar that we have run on a range of topics throughout this year, uh, absolutely jump onto our website, jc.edu.au forward slash, web slash webinars. Uh, you'll be able to access them all there and gain great insight on a range of topics that we have discussed previously. Uh, however, for uh, from all of us, um, Good night, thank you. Uh, and there will be a link that appears as you exit this, if you could just do that feedback form, that would be amazing. Uh, but for everyone here tonight, thank you and good night.